Boy, how you doing? This is Tom and this is Tom's Radio Room Show, and I've been trying for hours to get this set up. And I just, I failed. I have actually failed, once again. Anyway, what I wanted to show you is this MFJ-1040C transceiver pre-select that Richard at MFJ sent me for review. And ideally what I wanted is to find a weak station and put the pre-selector in and out of the circuit between the radio, the Grundig 800, and my antenna, which is the OCF HF antenna that Tim sent me. My vertical MFJ 31-foot antenna, the cable for it is still hooked up to that J-pole, so that, I can't use that antenna this morning. Anyway, um, it's 7.25 a.m. here in Clearwater, Florida, and the band conditions are just absolutely terrible. I mean, in the toilet for shortwave. The Solar Fox Index, I checked this morning, is 67. You want it to be above 100 at 67. Well, it's been running down and low, 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 low in 60s for months. Uh, a previous show indicated that it should be better tomorrow and Sunday. So there is hope. But I wanted to do this demonstration of this pre-select. In the, uh, what I was trying to set up is to receive a, a known weak signal and see the improvement that the pre-selector would do. I'm going to just quickly try to show you that and then I'm going to talk about the pre-selector and what it is. So the pre-selector is on right now, meaning it's in the circuit between the Grundig receiver and the antenna. So let's turn the volume back up. Terrible! A lot of noise. Now, the pre-selector is on. Let me tune it to the tuning knob here. That's peaked up. Now let me turn it off. Now when you turn the power off, it takes it out of the circuit. And I don't know. The signal is so bad. Let's try it again. I'll turn it back on. I'll let you listen. Now I'll turn it back on. It is so bad. That signal is so bad and um, it's kind of coming and going. Earlier it was a little bit better, not much. I tried 5 megahertz, 5 megahertz of course this time in the morning which is 7.30 basically. Uh, 5 megahertz for me would be better. So I can't really illustrate how the pre-selector helps. It does help. And one of the big things, let me turn this, there we go. One of the big things it helps with, and it won't help this setup, because Big Bertha here is a great radio. She does not tolerate um, bleed over. As you've seen in some of the other videos I've done with um, inexpensive radios, portable radios. Some of them really suffer from bleed over. And what I mean by bleed over is I have several very strong uh, medium wave stations. One that's only like five miles from me. And they're pumping out the power. It's a, it's a newer station. And it just, on those cheap radios, it bleeds all over the shortwave band. Just, it makes the radio on shortwave unusable. Well this would help because it's going to tune and just let those frequencies that you want in. Now that's one test I could set up which I probably do in the future is I'll set this up with one of those radios that has that suffers from bleed over from medium wave. I'll have to go back to my videos and see which ones they were. 
the so that's one thing that this thing does. Also, it, as I said before, it does have an amplifier, so it does amplify the signal. I think the um, documentation says it will amplify up to 20 dB, which is a huge amount. And um, it has two knobs here for tuning. One is you select the band. Now we're talking about short wave here. We're talking about one megahertz to 54 megahertz. So it will also work up to six meter band for amateur radio operators. And then once you do that, then you use this knob here to fine tune um, the pre-selector to only allow the signals you want to come in. And then this switch, which I will, I mean this knob, which I will not use, is if you have this connected to your transceiver and you're going to transmit, this adds in a delay so that your receiver doesn't, or your transmitter doesn't get out while your receiver is still connected. I guess it, I'm not going to use that so I don't know that much about it. Just an extra feature. And down here, we have one, two, three, four buttons. Uh, let me zoom in. That might help. You're probably seeing, gosh, Tom, I can't see anything. Okay. Let's zoom in. We'll move the camera over. That's max zoom in this resolution. So we have th four buttons down here. The first button is attenuator on and off. So you can put in an attenuation in case your signal is too strong. Say you have a station that's just too strong even without any amplification. Now the amplification you can control with this knob here marked gain. The next one is antenna one and two. So you can hook up two antennas to this. So in addition to a pre-selector, in addition to a amplifier, it's an antenna switch. And this button here is you can hook up two radios. So you can have two different radios and two different antennas and switch back and forth. This will be great for me especially when I'm testing multiple antennas or multiple radios. I can easily switch back and forth. Idea. And then this over here is the power button. Let me turn it off and there's a little light here that just went off. On, off. Okay. So that's the front, and now if we dare, we try to turn this very carefully. I don't know how far I can get. So here is the two connections. You can't see the back one. There's two connections there for antennas. So you can hook up two antennas. They're PL, uh, excuse me, SO259s. And then here's two for two radios you can hook up. Look at my mosquito coming in here and bother me. Go away, you mosquito. And then here is the power connection. You have to provide power. They provide the cable, but they don't provide an adapter. You have to buy the adapter separately. I'm using my lab supply. It uses 9 to 12 volts. So you could actually uh, power it off of a 9-volt battery or a 12-volt battery, whatever. <coughs> and then this is the relay connection to go to your transceiver if you're going to hook up a transceiver with this setup. Like I say, I'm going to use it for receiving it only, so I'm not going to go into that. So, uh, like I say, if nothing else, it makes a great antenna switch. Let me, uh, and uh, Richard sent me this for review. There's, he sent me three things. And this is, if you want to buy this, you can go to MFJ, and I believe they're on Amazon, I'll have to check, <clears throat> it's $120. They have other models uh, with less features that are a little less expensive. So that's it. I, I wish I could do a good demonstration of it, but it's you got to have the right conditions. you got to have a weak station that is coming in and you can show that this helps select that station and amplify the signal. Or if you get a station that has another station right on top of it, you could show how you can tune out that other station. 
or if you have a radio that is suffering from bleed over, you could illustrate that. Unfortunately, I can't set up those conditions this morning. I will try my best to do it in the near future. That's it. I think this is a pretty nice little device. I wish I could demonstrate it a little better, but I will. I'll get to it. I'll get it. I'll get the conditions right. Uh, let's just see what we got right now before we stop. We will. We leave it off. Now, what it does is, when you turn the power off, it switches out all the electronics in here, and then connects the antenna right to the radio. So it bypasses this all again. So you can, you know, if you're con if the conditions are good, you, you don't need to use this. Just turn it off. You don't have to disconnect anything, and you're good to go. So let's see what we got right now. It's off. WWV 10 megahertz is gone. Well, there it is. Beer. Can't hear the ticks. Every once in a while, they come in. Okay, let's turn it on, see what that helps. It helps, but the problem is, is the signal is so weak and down below the noise floor that when you turn this on and you're using the amplifier, it increases the noise too, so it doesn't help. Now, I don't have the gain all the way up. Let me turn the gain it's about halfway. So let me, it's on. Let me turn the volume back up. Can't hardly hear anything. Now, let's, there's the beep on the minute. We turn the gain up. Didn't help much. Let me see if I'm tuned. See, if when I go off, the signal level goes down. Right there is the sweet spot. Can barely hear it. Bypassed. Maybe slightly lower without this. Of course, it's changing over time. Turn it back on one more time. Don't. That's not a good example because the signal is so bad and the conditions right now are so bad. And I'm just hoping this weekend, um, as the doctor indicated, things will improve. Kind of what? I think that's what my doctor told me last time I went to see her. Tom, things will improve. Yeah, that's what she said. Anyway, I'm talking about the doctor who does the solar weather analysis. That's it. If you enjoyed the show, please give me a thumbs up. I'm sorry. I will try to set up a condition where I can really illustrate this thing more. Have a great day. Bye-bye.